Okay, so how am I going to get that feeder out to refill it? All right, here goes nothing. Let's reach inside here. Uh, don't. Oh, man. Oh, uh, holy. They're everywhere. This is a typical day of keeping Liameptum occidentale. But dang, they're all over me now. Ugh. Man. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of California Ant Keeper. Today we're going to be talking all about Liameptum, or Leos for short. What made me want to start keeping Leos was how big their colonies are in the wild. They are massive. I mean, these pictures can't even tell you how big that colony was. But if you want to catch a Liameptum queen, early May is the time to do it in Southern California. Leo queens have one really big flight a year, sometimes two, but it's usually on the first really, really warm night in May. I usually find these queens between 8 and 9 o'clock at night, just walking down my street and looking under the light posts. For founding these queens, I recommend just a simple test tube setup and put them away in a dark place for about a month and a half and she'll have her first workers, which will be about 20 to 30 workers. After the first workers came, I skipped putting them in a small nest and I put them directly into a medium sized nest and they did fine. After about three months in the medium sized nest, I had to move them over to this larger nucleus nest by Tar Heel Ants. When I moved this nest to get the footage for you guys, I didn't realize all the escaped ants had made another nest underneath this nest. My ant nest has escaped Leo workers running around it 24 7 and it's pretty common to see. And there is so much brood right now. There's thousands of eggs right there. That's crazy. But here's a real sighting of the queen. I never see her. This is like the first time I've seen her in six months. Leo queens are massive compared to their workers. They're almost the size of a smaller Campanatus queen, I would say. They're even bigger than some of the Campanatus queens I've seen. All right, I filled the liquid feeder full of nectar and I put it back in and I gave them a few cut up mealworms and... This should keep them happy for a few days. If Leos go three days without sugar water, they will die. So always make sure your Leos have fresh sugar water or nectar. They are known for their massive trails in the wild. And you can see they already got a few trails going in there. Sometimes if they're too crazy, I just fill those little cups in there with nectar and just pour it straight in. But there are so many Leos in this tunnel. I shined a light through the back and you can barely see it. But they're also known for very weird behavior like this. They do this almost daily. So I went back the next day to see if I could get more footage of the queen. And sure enough, I was lucky. She was in the same spot she was in the day before. And look how much less eggs there are now. They've already developed from the day before. If you do decide to keep this type of ant, I strongly suggest you don't keep the colony in your house though. I keep my colony in my garage because they escape about every six months and that would just be a nightmare in the house. Okay, so let's talk about temperature. What temperature should these Leos be at? Okay, so for the first year, I did heat them. I had a heating cable or a heating pad under their nest at all times. But now I don't because the colony will go way too fast for me to control if I keep heating them up. Moving on to food now. You can feed these just about any type of bug. Just mix it up a little bit. Don't feed them mealworms every day or crickets every day or fruit flies every day. Just try to mix it up a little bit, but I usually alternate between those three. Also, feed them accordingly to how fast you want them to grow. If you want them to grow fast in the beginning, I recommend feeding them every other day, like one or two crickets, and they will eat it all too. Let's talk about hibernation now. I was told that Leos do not hibernate when I got him, but this is not true. But first, will someone grab that feeder out for me? I don't want to do it this time. So in the case of this colony, the queen did go through a hibernation or a diapause where she did take a break from laying eggs. Last winter, the queen completely disappeared and so did the brood pile, so I thought she had died. And when I finally accepted her death about two to three months after, I noticed a giant pile of eggs appeared in there one day. But there are also other types of Liameptum species found in different parts of the world. 
The hardest thing about keeping Lyomeptum is that they're very good at escaping. I just keep a solid sheet of glass on top of these bins so I know they will not escape. But there are also holes in the side of the container so they can breathe. But this colony has lifted up the sheet of glass before and escaped. So now I have to keep bottles of water on top of the sheet of glass. One of the good things about Leos running around my garage all day is that they keep away the foreign ants like the Argentines and the fire ants because every year my colonies have been attacked by those and this is the first year they haven't. But if you guys have any questions about taking care of ants, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll always answer questions about taking care of ants. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you have a good rest of your week guys. Take care.